on KTSM 90 Sports with Colin Deaver. Sponsored by Glasheen Byers and Enderman Injury Lawyers. The story revolving around New Mexico State's Mike Peak and involved in a deadly shooting in Albuquerque on November 19th took another big turn tonight. The Aggies were playing Simon Fraser in a game at the Pan American Center tonight when midway through the first half, Albuquerque TV station KOT released a report saying that New Mexico State coach Dominique Taylor allegedly held on to the gun that Peak used in the shooting that killed Brandon Travis, a UNM student, back on November 19th and left Mike Peak hospitalized again. If you remember the report Brandon Travis allegedly shot first at peak peak fired back after a uh, inc yeah, after an incident involving three other NM UNM students now peak is seen on video approaching a yellow Camaro where he meets three of his teammates Issa Muhammad Chi Chi Avery and Anthony Roy peak is seen putting items into the trunk right before the car drives off now according again to this report assistant coach Dominique Taylor had the firearm back at the team's hotel all of this coming today as Peak was suspended indefinitely from NMSU's basketball program. Now, according to this report, coaches left Albuquerque on the team bus after the November 19th shooting at the UNM campus that left the victim dead. The report indicates that when the team bus left Albuquerque, NMSU, or excuse me, New Mexico State Police were still working to interview players and coaches and were trying to locate the gun Peak used during the deadly altercation. Peak's gun again eventually found with the coach, Dominic Taylor, at the Albuquerque hotel the team was staying at. Police also found his phone and tablet on the bus after police pulled it, the buses over as it was re returning to Las Cruces that afternoon. Now, head coach Greg Heyer met with the media following today's game against Simon Fraser. He, Heyer allegedly told police in the report from KOAT that he didn't know where the gun was when he was asked about it the day of the shooting. Today in this post-game press conference, Heyer did not say much against citing the ongoing investigation. We played this off the top of the show, but in case you missed it, here is a lot of what Heyer had to say during his post-game press conference tonight. Obviously, Coach, I'm sure you're maybe aware of the report that was put out mid-game. Um, are you able to comment on any of the actions of your players or coaches that night? I'm not able to comment because of the ongoing investigation. You can't, you can't tell us anything about what happened that day. Uh, the report said you all left while the investigation was still happening. That's why NM State Police had to come get you guys. I can't comment. It's an ongoing investigation. Are you guys going on the road trip this week? Uh, yes. We leave tomorrow morning. All the coaches are? Yes. Do you think it should have happened sooner, you know, knowing that he had broken the curfew, knowing he had a gun on a college campus? Like I said, I'll, uh, you know, that's up to administration, and I'll leave it at that. Do you know when you might be able to say more legally? Uh, probably when the investigation is, is finished. Now, as you heard from Hire, there are a lot of no comments citing this ongoing investigation. Again, New Mexico State players and coaches were unaware that this report had come out probably until uh, halftime for the coaches. The players were not alerted to it until Mario Mocha, the athletic director, met with them post game. Mario Mocha, again, would not comment on the ongoing investigation, but he and Greg Hire did confirm, as you heard there, that they do plan on traveling tomorrow for their road game at Santa Clara in California on Wednesday. All coaches and all players will be traveling with the team as of now to take part in that road trip in that game on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. KTSM, I want to say this, has reached out to New Mexico State Police. Uh, their spokesman who said the investigation is ongoing. They would not comment at this time. We are also trying to verify the warrant report independently that KOAT has. Now, NMSU players were made available post game as well. They, again, citing the ongoing investigation, would not comment on anything. And uh, But I will say that Kyle Fight, a New Mexico State guard, a transfer from a junior college, had some things uh, to offer of what to say in terms of what the team has been going through the last couple of weeks as all of this has been hap happening, he encapsulates it here. It's been a whirlwind, but, um, you know, we're just trying to stay focused and just take our mindset as one day, one play, uh, everything at, at a time. So we're just trying to just stay focused and, um, you know, let the outside noise be the outside noise and, you know, internally um, just, you know, try and win every day, be productive you know, inspire each other on and off the court and uh, be positive. Um, he's one of our brothers, so we love him. And, um, you know, we got to keep moving forward. 
Again, that's Kyle Fight, New Mexico State guard. You heard him there at the very end there discussing Mike Peak. He gets suspended indefinitely today by New Mexico State for his role in a deadly shooting in Albuquerque on November 19th. But that really not even the big news of the day regarding the Aggies. To reiterate, New Mexico State assistant coach, according to a report from KOAT in Albuquerque, New Mexico State assistant coach Dominique Taylor held on to the gun that Peak used in the deadly shooting, and three of his teammates arrived shortly after the shooting, and Peak put the uh, put some items in. Uh, into the trunk of the car. Those teammates were Issa Muhammad, Anthony Roy, and Chi Chi Avery. This is a developing story. All of this happening while New Mexico State was playing Simon Fraser tonight at the Pan American Center. We will continue to keep you updated on this ever evolving story here on KTSM. I will send it to a break. We'll be back with more after this.